Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. It's Friday and we are back with TGIF. Now we're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. And tonight we have a special guest that's filling in for Funky Dineva, the one and only, the messy, but a good <laughs> interviewer, the godfather of mess and shade, <laughs> and uh, the uh, uh, inspiration behind a lot of personalities on reality television, Carlos King. So sit back, relax, and get <laughs> <rid of> some <laughs> hot tea. <laughs> Claudia's on one today. Uh -oh. I, I see. I see. No <laughs> one today. What's up, fellas? What's up, Al Reynolds? What's up, oh. Carl? Carlos King? What's up? Oh, you know, to, all all the <laughs> to all the fucking Dineva fans, you are seeing double. It's just me. I know he and I look alike and sound alike, but it's Carlos King. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here with Claudia and Al. Yes. You've been. Uh, <laughs> You've been getting quite a lot of attention with your your interview style. Like your interviews have been really good. I appreciate that. You know, these are my friends in the industry. Like you were on my podcast and got yeah. rave reviews. So I'm happy to be a support system for, you know, this industry. Well, we'll have to spin the block and come in person now if you've upgraded from Zoom to in person. <laughs> We can only wish to do the same ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> Claudia, you still got the quick wit, bitch, and I love it. Hey, Carlos, how does it feel to break away from you so many, you know, your hit shows and dish some tea with us? You know, listen, it's nice to be on this side of the Zoom and <laughs> talk to you too about all things happening in the world of pop culture. So it's going to be fun. But with you, Claudia, you messy, baby. So I am going to be on my best behavior like Al B, honey. No, 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 no. You're taking Q's place. So you got to be on your worst behavior unless you're unlocking your better self. But we're not doing that tonight. We're having fun tonight. We're going to have fun with you, Carlos. But before we start the show, I would like to give a personal shout out to the amazing editors over at 50bold.com. They are celebrating six years of informing, inspiring, and empowering Black folks who are 50 and over. I've done a profile with them. When I tell you each one of those ladies are so incredible, I definitely recommend everyone please check out 50 um, bold.com. Uh, it's just an amazing organization, an incredible resource, too. Very nice. And to all the people that hit us on the DMs and they want their birthday shout outs, you kind of got to go through the proper channels because we need a photo of you. We need to know where you're from and your first and last name. So we want to definitely shout y'all out. All right. So who's drinking tonight? Are we going to have that kind of show or a sober show? What are we doing? <laughs> I got my alkaline water. Since oh. I heard Carlos was going to be on the show, I, I decided not to drink. <laughs> so both of you aren't drinking tonight? Right. Are you nervous, Al? Yes, I got to stay focused. See, you and Claudia are so quick wit, and Q is quick wit, too. I have to be on my P's and Q's when it comes to you and Claudia, though. I, I, already, yeah. know what this, I already know what this night's going to be like. I promise you. Me and Claudia are about to give you a show. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, me and Claudia are about to give him a show, honey. Aren't we, Claudia? That's right. That's what we do. Okay. Let's get into it. Uh, wedding bells are in the air, according to Marcus Jordan's recent encounter with TMZ. Marcus recently told the entertainment outlet that he's ready to walk down the aisle with his boo, Larsa Pippen. And the two are looking for a location for their nuptials. How do you feel about this? And this is this a disaster waiting to happen? Al, we're going to go to you first. What do you think about this? And how oh, do you think this feels? I know, you know, I you guys know that I'm here always for black love, you know, especially. Uh, 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 Al, she ain't black, baby. Uh, I'm just saying he is. Okay, you know, so you're into black. Like, I'm here for I'm here for black men being in love and respecting their queens. Biracial this, love, continue. Right. This relationship to me just doesn't feel right. It's something about it that just does not settle well with me. So I'm hoping it doesn't lead to disaster because if they're in love, I want them to be in love for a long time. But it just appears that if you don't have your parental's approval or your parents' approval, that your relationship will always be strained in some type of fashion. No? I think it just creates, like, if your family doesn't support you in your nuptials, I just think it creates an environment in the relationship that leads to, like, a lot of distrust, criticism, and, you know, contention, conflict. I mean, well, lots of being the ex-wife of your daddy's, like, the rival. Right, like, that's right. crazy. Uh, Carlos, what do you think about this? Or do you think it's a, a match made in heaven? You think they're going to last? You think, we, would you give them a show? 
Oh, I was going to say it's a match made in reality heaven, honey. Larsa <laughs> Pippen is one of the stars of The Real Housewives of Miami. And look, I'm not mad at a chick who is going to date younger and somebody's son. I'm not mad at it. It, it makes for great television. It makes for a great story. And at the end of the day, look, Larsa was married to Scottie Pippen for over, I think, 20 years. Okay? She loves an athlete. She loves balls. She loves playing with balls. You say balls? Yes, she loves playing with balls. She loves to dribble them. You know, I do too. So I understand where she's coming from in terms of if you can't beat them, join them. The balls? The balls? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you can't beat the balls, you join them. If you can't beat the balls, baby, make sure they bounce on your chin. Chin's oh, wow, God, Carlos. Wow, Carlos. Ah. Wow. He's okay. bringing the fire tonight, okay? Who, who do you think plays with balls better between you and Larsa? Between you, Art, Larsa, and Al, rank the ball <laughs> handling abilities. How did I get in this? Well, uh, according to Future, allegedly, Larsa was playing with balls in his private jet, so sis got me beat. Ooh. Allegedly. Future said that? In a rap song. Oh, see, this is good tea right here. All right, just a note, Michael Jordan disapproved of their relationship a few months ago, so that's going to be interesting. It'd be a dope reality show if he'd be on it, too, with Juanita. We need the whole family on there. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, Juanita, yes. I wonder what she's thinking. You know, Black mamas don't play when it comes to their boys, okay? So mm -hmm. I'm very curious what Juanita thinks of Larsa. Now, that's a show that I would watch, produce, put on the streaming app, on YouTube, honey. <laughs> You know, on a billboard in Times Square. I'm here for it. Black moms already don't like their sons being with older women. Really, they have a problem with a lot of their girls. They, they're very protective. So older. Are you talking and then about experience? Oh, yeah, of course, because I used to date young back in the day. I stopped that, though. Or <laughs> used to? How old is KJ? He was on, like, four years younger than me, like, three and a half. But everybody acted like he, because he had, like, such a baby face. But I used to date, like, you know, 10 years younger back in the day. Mamas don't like that. They get they feel away. They'll be all right, though. Mm. All right. In the midst of a pending lawsuit made against Lizzo, it seems like her big girl dance troupe is sticking beside her. The dancers posted the following message to Instagram. We had the time of our lives on the special tour. We have been so honored to share the stage with such amazing talent. The commitment to character and culture taking precedence over every movement and moment has been one of the greatest lessons and blessings that we could possibly ask for. Damn, what publicist wrote that? <laughs> All right, what are your thoughts? No one talks like that. Like, what are your thoughts and how much do you think they pay these dancers to release this post? Carlos, you're laughing, so I think you agree with me. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, I obviously do. Listen, no shade to dancers, but I think the highest education they get is a 12th grade. So to believe <laughs> that this type of writing and the eloquent <laughs> speech, if you will, the grammar, the thesaurus, the encyclopedia that was used to write this is clearly the hands of a publicist. But look. I am mad at it. Lizzo, unfortunately, is getting a lot of shade, allegedly, for what she did. Now, if I had employees who were still getting a W-2, a 1099 with my company, baby, you best believe they better write something. They better go to chat GPT. <laughs> Seriously, and figure out what you're going to say in my defense. So I understand it. And guess what? I am mad at you. You know, the dance community is going to come for you because you basically really? shaded it. None of them went past 12th grade. That's the job. You're going to find out. You're going to find out. Those of Claudia Jordan Foxhole or Al Reynolds and Bill Itz. Claudia, <laughs> he's going he to find out today. Our soulmates don't play. <laughs> yeah, or you like, offend oh. them. They come for your neck. <laughs> uh, Beyonce also gave Lizzo a shout out during her recent concert. So I guess she's back in good graces. Al, what do you think about this? I think she's going to need more than a Beyonce shout out, to be honest. And that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, who paid them to actually issue this paragraph of a statement? But listen, um, I got to be really honest. This still remains. It's still, I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced because they never refuted any of the allegations as it relates to, you know, her being a bully 
her making them do things they weren't supposed to do. You know, they never said that they did not see or experience any of this while they were working there. That's what we needed to hear from those dancers, right? And I'm glad that the dancers or whoever is watching uh, TGIF followed my advice, because I said this a couple of weeks ago, that we need to hear from the dancers. But I didn't mean like this. We needed to hear them say that everything those other young ladies experience and are claiming is something that they've never experienced or witnessed ever in their time with Lizzo. That's the only way I would have been convinced by this letter. Other than that, this seems like a poor PR play that didn't land well. I just got to shout you out, Al, because you've given advice and Lizzo taking your advice, dancers, president, <laughs> Dante, like everybody that's like who's who has definitely listened to Al Reynolds' advice and has applied that to their life. And if it wasn't for you, I feel like they would not exactly. be able to navigate through this thing called life. That's right. And I'm doing it for free right here. Y'all better join in. Everybody First of all, it ain't free. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't put none of my friends on for free. You better talk about that six-figure check you got that got okay, quadruples. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm talking about giving out my advice. Now. Okay, I'm talking about being, having a platform, being on TV, I honey. Um, Shannon <laughs> Farmer said they're trying to keep them checks, wait till they get fired. They're probably, you know, they're saying they'll probably say something yeah. different. Mm -hmm. Listen, anyone who's been involved in lawsuits, I mean, not saying I have, but, you know, law, well, me and Al, I think both have. Yeah. Um, you oh. can find you can find people that will say that things that you need them to say, just like there's the opposition, because there's there's you know there's a good chance that there's people on both sides that will say something publicly for you, and you know you just get one or two people to say something and it, it kind of backs your case and vice versa. So we'll see. All right, Megan Thee Stallion recently called out her haters after the Tory Lane sentencing. Take a look. I just want to say. Okay. Uh, can you blame Megan Thee Stallion? I feel like she got blamed for the state going after Tory. She didn't even press charges. It was really the state. She didn't even cooperate. She tried to lie for him at first to protect him, and he kept prodding her. Carlos, what do you think about this? Listen, I love Megan Thee Stallion. I'm a huge fan of hers. I, I really want Megan to let this go. I do. You like you are a big rap star. You were on Saturday Night Live, not only hosting, but performing. You have so many things to be grateful for. The man who, I, uh, there's no legend, he's, he's in jail. The man who shot you is in jail. Leave it alone. You don't have to address your haters. Claudia, Al, we have haters, right? I don't dress Nan. I girl. <laughs> well, you, well, well, that because... Mm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm Go ahead, Carlos. Al, what were you gonna say? Well, you know, Al loves all the all the uh, the celebrities, honey. That they're his best. <laughs> Al, so you don't, Al, you don't have haters. That's me and Claudia. I'm so <laughs> you cannot address the haters because you're giving them so much power. You are Megan the Stallion. Take Megan the microphone and talk about something else that you are achieving. Leave this in the past. He's in jail, sis. Let it go. Let it go. I, I hear you, and I know we've had these conversations back in the Housewives days about how I would p clap back. I, I just so I just look at things from the emotional side. Sometimes, like, may not be logical. Like a lot of men, y'all think more logically. A lot of times, us women, I know it's a stereotype, tend to think more emotionally. And she was probably she she was quiet for a long time. You know what I mean? And then uh, it must be frustrating. What? Like, I think she's she was quiet for a long time. He was making songs oh, about God. her. Remember? Yeah, and she was also making tweets. Right. She did, right. but but it's even when he was sentenced, song. like they blamed her for the the long sentence. No, this is the thing. I think my thing is this: justice was served. That's mm -hmm. the end of it, baby. You ain't got to say nothing after that. Justice was served. Everything that happened prior, it is what it is. Justice yeah. was served. You need to just sit there and like don't give any sort of attention to something that has been serviced already. So that's my thing with her. <laughs> yep, I think I, I'm glad she had to set her one thing. Now, if she keeps on going, it's going to start reflecting badly in her, I think. Yes. You know? Al, what do you think? I, I, can't I know, because you know Megan Thee Stallion's watching right now for advice, so. Right. Speak to Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Such a hater, such a hater. Anyway, <laughs> Megan's people, Megan's people, I know y'all listening to me. No, I couldn't agree more with Carlos. I'm just like, I'm so confused you won. 
Justice has been served. He's in jail. Like, I'm not sure what else she's looking for. I um, And maybe that's some trauma that she probably needs to get some help with because I'm like, Carlos, woman, your check ain't stopped. You're not doing anything but getting bigger. You're wanted all over the world to perform. You're dating internationally now. Like, what? What? What do you? What reason do you have to be complaining about this? That's you true. Are. She's dating a rich, chocolate, over five foot five man, which wasn't the case with Tory Lane. So she's actually in a good place right now. Uh, <laughs> That's on the page, right? <laughs> Lovely said, "Good for Megan." Tory taunted her, and his and uh, taunted her. His behavior is a great part of why he was convicted. No remorse. Any Tory supporter is clearly okay with domestic violence. And Tadisha Ashley said, "I think she deserves to at least say that." She had everyone dogpiling her for three years. All right. Good conversation, fellas. All right, coming up next, Nene Leaks, unpaid balance, and later, find out what we would do in a sticky situation. We'll find out when we return. Welcome back to TGIF uh, in the chat. Uh, people are saying they love you. Alex J said, uh, I'm sorry, Nancy Wright said, love me some Carlos, baby. Okay. Hey. Alex, Alex J said, Claudia in her bag tonight. You know how I am. I have my rule. If my hair feels like it's cute, then I'm going to be acting up. When it's raggedy, then I'm going to be more humble. So that ain't the case tonight. All right, Carlos. You recently broke the internet with Nene Leakes on a recent episode of Reality with the King, and she actually showed your girl some love. Actually, that was a, it was a really good interview. You're really good at this. You're really, really good at this. That means a lot coming from you, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you. You yeah, know, it was. It was. It, I think you do a good job at opening up people's minds about people that may have them, their minds set. And, and not just with her, with everyone you interview. I think that is definitely your specialty. Thank you. So now what do you think it's going to take for Nene and me to have a, oh my God, this is, this is my, the, my producers asked me this because they'd be like, why her name always in your mouth? What do you think it's going to take for Nene and me to have a sit down to squash this alleged beef? And do you think we should or just not? Listen, there's no beef to squash. Do you there's remember when you and I were at Crustaceans? Yes. Years ago in Los Angeles. And an hour later, Nene Leaks walks in um, with Greg Leaks, rest in peace. Yes. And you two spoke, took pictures. There's no beef. I think, look, Claudia, you know, I love you, bitch. You definitely uh, may say things that um, <laughs> rub people the wrong way. But, but I know you are a comedian and I know you don't mean it. So I don't think there's any beef to squash. Now, look, what I think it'll take is Carlos King, like Don King, create a, a show that involves the two of you having to sit down. So call me a promoter. I'm Don King. Oh you my are Mike Tyson, and she is Evander Holyfield. Let's go. Uh, but I'm no about, boxing. I'm not going to her ear off. Yeah, I I think like I said on the Breakfast Club, I think the sometimes the outsiders uh, amplify things as well. And then we have social media. So if she comments on something about me, I comment back, vice versa. And it's it's so tip tap, but it's no real beef. So we good. All right, y'all. Speaking of Nene, your girl's apparently being taken to court over unpaid rent for her shop swag boutique. Now the landlord claims she vacated in January of 2022. And when the term ended, she never paid off the balance of $22,900 under the lease. Carlos, what's the tea on this? What's the real story? <laughs> Listen, Nene doesn't bank at Wells Carlos, okay? So I don't know what's going on with this particular situation or else I would have asked it in my interview with her. But look, Nene did respond and she's... <laughs> Listen, you got to love Nene. She's like you, Claudia. She's quick. Nene responded and said, the lease wasn't Greg's name. <laughs> so I guess that means Greg owes <laughs> the money. And Nene's like, if you're not going to get it from the ben beneficiary amount, then baby, you are out of luck. Team Nene. All right. Hey, Al, I know that's your friend. And I know that the company, they sue in the estate. What is or are they suing her? What what is going on with this? Oh, so you know, luckily, Claudia, this didn't happen in the state of Texas or the mm -hmm. state of California or Arizona or Nevada or New Mexico or Washington or Wisconsin. Those states 
uh, spouses are being married, the debt transfers to the spouse. Mm -hmm. Luckily, in the state of Georgia, marriage by itself does not make you liable for your spouse's mm -hmm. debt. So I think Miss Nene Leakes probably was advised by her lawyers to share that information, but we'll see. I hope that's the case because that would be uh, that would be fantastic for her. Uh, that's Brittany said. My grandfather said you don't pay dead people's bills, and she said that, that leaves in Greg's name. Her grandfather said it. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa said I ain't got to pay these bills. All right, I'm with it. And Shauna Wright says so. Yep, Carlos has to come back once a month now. I love to see him and Funky on the show. Oh Lord, I don't I think it'll be a triple R rated episode with uh, NC17, not triple X, because we ain't that type of men, but it'll be a racy episode with us two on at the same time. Lord Jesus. Well, luckily we're streaming for now, and that's okay. <laughs> Bobby, are you bad? You nasty. <laughs> All right, I was prepared to die was a remark made by a Howard University student who was one of the many students that were recently attacked on the campus by local residents in D.C. What are your thoughts on this unfortunate tragedy? Al, I know you lived in D.C. for quite a while. What do you think about this? You know, I, I think it's horrible. I think it's horrible and I think it's, it's irresponsible for Howard University and the administration. Listen, kids that go to Howard University for four years, they pay $200,000 for that education and that education should come with some type of protection and safety on their campus. Howard has been plagued plagued remember like two years ago the students had a sit-in they were living in tents because of conditions food conditions housing conditions mold howard needs to do better now i will say this now this these juveniles that jumped the howard students they belong to a fight club in dc it's it's i don't want to call it a gang but let's just say it's a little organization called the Fight Club, and they are known to do this. They are known to walk through the city and cause brawls. My thing is you have a security guard right there witnessing everything, and then you had no security guards who got there in time. That is a problem, Howard University, and it's a problem that needs to be fixed sooner than later. All right. Carlos, what are your thoughts? No, listen, I agree with everything Al said. Shocking, right? No, I think it's unfortunate. I think Howard University has to do something. And I appreciate the knowledge of knowing that it's a fight club, not a gang. So I think when you see a group of Black men, you just immediately go towards a gang um, title. But it's, it's unfortunate all around, for sure. All right. Once again, I keep saying we are in a race to the bottom. Like, why do people even want to even do this, period? Right. Uh, Tristan Lee said, damn it. Uh, no, damn it. Who are raising these kids? Well, we've seen kids don't respect authority. They don't respect teachers. They don't respect each other. They don't respect their mamas. This is the most ratchet era in history, I think, is my opinion. And you know why, though, right? Why? Why? Um, social media. And listen, I'm not one to blame because I get blamed for things. Right, Claudia? <laughs> but, yeah. Right, thank you. But no, I think <laughs> it's because everybody's chasing something. And I am happy that I grew up at a time where when you saw a fight, you didn't take up your phone, take out your phone, excuse me, and record it. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's, that's weird to me. When, when something to that degree, you either run <laughs> or you break it up. You, break you don't it record up. it and try to get so many hits and tweets. It's, it's disturbing. That's Brittany said, Howard needs to close the campus. It's hard being an open campus adjacent to the hood. Ooh. I don't now, think now, it's, I don't it's, think it's, it's in the hood. It's not adjacent to the hood anymore. I mean, it's 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 you know a historical area, but it's cleaned up quite a bit around there. And I know that dormitory because it's across from the track, and that track is a public track for everybody. And I play tennis there. Howard just needs to do better with their security. That's it. I mean, the kids spoke about this two years ago when they did the sit-in, and it fell on deaf ears. And you know what? Exactly what they were afraid of ended up happening. That's why I said Howard's got to do better. Brandon Brown said security be random old dudes from around the way. They don't be checking for no smoke. That's true. Sometimes I'm like, that's security. <laughs> okay. Like at the bank, when you all you got to do is kick them in the kneecaps and run. Right. Yeah. Ciao, bye. All right. A Las Vegas woman has been arrested for allegedly decapitating the head of her abusive boyfriend after she refused to perform oral sex. 
Well, that's one way to get out of it. According to reports, the man's head is reportedly still missing. What are your thoughts on this story, Al? Let's go to you first. I just, you shocked me when you told me about it earlier, or maybe it was the producers. What in the world? So she cut off his head because... She didn't want to give head. She didn't want, she didn't I want to give head. head. I, could, I could support her if she cut off his, you know, ding a but his head? Well, and the fact that it's missing, she got. She better watch out. What state is that? Because you know, there's a there is a law in certain states. It's called the abuse corp law. So if you hide a, a body's a, a, a decapitated head, you get an additional charge. It's like abuse corp law. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it is. You know a lot. I'm gonna call you Olivia Al Pope. You <laughs> you really know. You know a lot, Al. I ain't mad at you. So, Carlos, what do you think about this? And has anyone ever tried to force you into a sex act? And do you ever want to retaliate? <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, listen. I was of course girl. they did. Look at him. His mouth is wide no. open. No, his no. Open, don't it? His face <laughs> open. He look at his mouth wide open. His throat is fully I mean, closed. <laughs> throat, fully throated. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. This throat runs deep. This mouth has never disappointed anybody. Wow. It has never had Aren't to be. Aren't you married? Um, I am. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean I didn't have a, a life or a life with him. Listen, okay. I don't think you should cut off someone's head because they want head. I think it's one of those things where it's okay to just leave. I don't like doing something to that degree is sad, right? Allegedly, she was being abused, and that's another unfortunate situation. But the many times I've been asked to perform oral sex, I either say no or sometimes I just do it. Because at the end of the day, I am not getting abused. So I'll speak for myself. But I like, <laughs> I like classic my man because if I know, somebody else will. Not Carlos King being the real head doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Now, listen, listen here, honey. I am very inexperienced when it comes to that. But like I said, this mouth knows how to get to work, honey. Oh, know that. You tried all the girls. I Carlos see. King's fans only, right here. Only fans right here coming 30 days. Oh, Lord. Away. I'll I'll prefer a thirst trap with a dirty bathroom mirror than to go to OnlyFans, child. <laughs> uh, Peggy B said she gave the wrong head. Stevie Ray said, don't bite the head that pleases you. Ooh. And uh, Applaud said, yes, girl, take that head off. Damn, they for it. For real. That says a lot about our viewers. All right. It's been reported that Antonio A.J. Armstrong Jr. has been found guilty of murdering his parents, Don, and former NFL player Antonio Sr. at the family's Southwest Houston home in 2016. Now, Antonio has been sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after serving 40 years what are your thoughts? Carlos, let's go to you first. What do you think about this? He killed his NFL, his NFL daddy and, and wife. Oh, I mean, I mean, death sentence. I mean, electrocution. I mean, anything that you can do to get rid of this person. That is horrendous. I could not imagine doing something to my parents. It's 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 disgusting. And I I, I feel no remorse for him. I think he needs to be under the jail along with the roaches and the bean pies they feed them and the slippers they have to wear before they have to do things in the prison room. Don't ask me how I know. I what? watch television. So no, he needs to just, yeah, I, I'm disturbed by this. It's disturbing. I believe he had two trials before they were mistrials. Al, what yeah, do you think I have this? to disagree with Carlos on this one. This trial is some good tea, everybody. So he had two trials. They were mistrials. It was a hung jury because they can't seem to understand why this 16-year-old, what his motive was for killing his parents when he was 16. Now, his uncle Harvey, which is Armstrong Sr.'s brother, who also played professional football, is pushing for AJ's innocence because he says that they didn't properly investigate AJ's brother, Josh, who suffers from mental illness. And they believe that he came back into that house because he had the codes and he could have possibly killed his parents. In addition, this is where it even gets more tricky. Uncle Harvey says that if you don't look at, if you don't want to look at the son, also look at seniors, AJ seniors, history, past history, because his business partner, as well as himself, 
were killed within 100 and what 360 days, like two years of each other. So the Uncle Harvey is saying there's something in the milk ain't clean. It's definitely shouldn't be pointing at Antonio A.J. Armstrong Jr. and that they they got the wrong person in prison. But what Isn't is that? that, that I'm sorry, is that Antonio saying okay. his brother did it? Huh? Is that Antonio saying that he didn't do it? Yeah, I'm pretty, I mean, he's saying, okay, so when they, they have recording of him saying that it was his fault, he didn't say he did it, but he did in the beginning when he was recorded and picked up, he said it was his fault. He never said he did it. Now, I don't know what he's saying in court because obviously I didn't have time to read the court documents, but I would like to see why two trials were deemed a mistrial because they couldn't really definitively say that Junior was the killer. That's interesting with the uncle saying, nah, man, it's not him and it's someone else because the uncle you would think would be more protective of his brother, you know what I mean? Of his brother, that's right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope that because he's convicted, he really did do it. And if he didn't, I hope there's a way out of it. All right, coming up next, find out what we would do in crazy situations. And later, will white people soon become the minority? Stick around and find out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Uh, during the break, Carlos was saying his brothers thought I was fine. So I was just asking him some questions about him. So how old are your brothers, Carlos? So a few of them are married, but apparently doesn't mean anything. Uh, sorry. Not me, girl. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm You're teasing. talking to the wrong housewife. <laughs> <laughs> you are not going to give me a trouble. Anyways, my brothers range from 35 to 46. And they like girls, all of them? Oh, well, <laughs> Claudia, you want to gag real quick? I have a gay brother. What? Are you blinking? Did no, you... I have a gay I have a gay brother. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. How many how many kids siblings are there? Oh, it's ten of us in total. I have six brothers and three sisters, and out of the six brothers, um, yeah, the other one's one is gay. So two gay brothers out of seven. Wow. Okay. Sounds like my dating know. life. Okay. Um, Mara Lara said, yes, Carlos, raindrops. Okay. They love they they raindrops. They're living for you. All right, soulmates, have y'all ever thought about how you would hand handle yourself if you were placed in the middle of a sticky or unexpected situation? Well, we like for you to chime in on a fun segment called hashtag WWYD. What would you do? All right. I want to know what you will do, okay? A man has uh, been arrested for sniffing a woman's butt in a Barnes & Noble bookstore. Carson Crowder was arrested by Glendale police on a misdemeanor charge. Crowder also failed to register as a sex offender due to a previous charge, and he was in violation of probation before the arrest. What would you do if you caught someone sniffing your butt in public? And uh, what are your thoughts on the story, Al? I think he probably would have caught a foot in his mouth. You know, because if, if if production can put that picture back up, guys, you're actually seeing him do it right there. So what he does is he walks around, he pretends like he's tying his shoestring. No, the, the video of the young lady in her book, the video with the lady in the book, with the book open. Okay, I guess we're not going to get that. There we go. All right, so you see the guy right there on the left, right there? So he bends down and he pretends like he's tying his shoe. You see him right there? And in him tying the shoe, he then puts his nose up to her behind and sniffs her behind. Now she didn't know it until she looked at the until she looked at the video. And look, the other part is right here. She catches him doing it to another patron of the library. So he goes to the library and sniffs booties. <laughs> Carlos doesn't look that offended. Well, the thing is Would you arch your back, Carlos? <laughs> well, I was gonna first of all, uh, I was gonna say, Claudia, because I know you love uh, ah! stories. I am a gay man. I w go used to frequent gay bars. I have had my butt sniff. I have had my crotch grab. Not saying it's right. I'm just saying as a you gay had your butt sniffed in the bars. Honey, they need to sniff before they can stick. So that is what needs to happen. Yes. So Al, you, know, you you've been to some freaky parties and sex parties. Have you? This Al, is I heard about but I never I've never been in a bar. I've never been I've never been in a bar and people walking around sniffing booties. I, that 
You have never been at a bar, Al, in New York City back in uh -huh. the early 2000s uh -huh. when they played Little Wayne and Birdman. And a, a <laughs> hot guy walks by, grabs your butt, and sniffs it, playing with it. No. To, to test no. the merchandise before he takes it home and rips off the price tag. Okay. Hmm. This is a new one on me. Oh, I got something new for you. So just go to a gay bar in New York City and get your. <laughs> Go to New York City. No, I, I said this the other day. I used to be upset that my mother never watches a show. Uh -huh. Like, Mom, why don't you support me? And then we have topics like and this. And then we have like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Where you can go to a New York City bar, somebody can walk by. Do they stick their finger down your pants and then snip it? Or they just... I'm not going to tell you my full past now, Alvarez. You got to buy the book money <laughs> 10 years now. But I'll let you know. Let's just say New York City in the early 2000s, was a great time. All right. Okay. A man was arrested during an interview at a police department in Arkansas. Apparently, 24-year-old Justin C. Carter applied for the police officer position through an online application while hiding in South Carolina. But they quickly found out that he had warrants out for his arrest in Georgia. What would you do if you were arrested during an interview? And what are your thoughts on this crazy story? Let's go to you first, Carlos. Because I know you've dealt with some of this. With what? Big arrest? <laughs> you know, people with records, hiring people with records and stuff like that. Wow. <laughs> well, look, as a reality TV executive, you hire people oftentimes who have a checkered past. We do something called a Lexus Nexus search. And nothing. right. It must not be good. They slipping through the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> they are making it to cast. <laughs> Everybody has a pass, right? Yes. It's all about how you are your present. So listen, getting arrested doing an interview is not on the bingo card in which I apply. But I will say, if I had to fire any of my reality stars who had a warrant, I would not have any shows on the air. I think it works great for reality TV. Like, no judging there, but you are applying for a police officer position when you got a warrant out for your arrest, which is, to me, that's what makes oh, it crazy, no. right? I know. You should apply to be a dancer on Lizzo's show, not a police officer. Don't worry, Carlos. <laughs> they're going to light you up. Listen, this is, it's worse than that, Claudia. It's worse than that. Uh -huh. Okay, so as we research this story, not only... He's a he's a totally different person. He's he, he's doing fake identity. So what he did is he applied for the job under a friend's name using a friend's ID. And so when he showed up for the interview, they were like, oh, you don't look anything like your ID. So he applied under somebody else's name, pretending to be somebody else. And when they found out who he really was, that's when they found out that he had warrants in the state of Georgia. So he was double dumb. Like what? he was double dumb. He gonna pretend to be somebody else to try to get a police job. And that's the job that's gonna require the most background check. Why would you impersonate somebody else? And so they've added that to his charges. People are so stupid. <laughs> you think? It's, it's just, uh, <laughs> uh. All right, a black 10 year old boy in Mississippi was arrested after the cops caught him peeing behind his mother's car. What would you do if this was your child? And how do you feel about this story, Carlos? I am that child. I I, I was that child. Um, I wet the bit until I was 12. So unfortunately, I have experienced peeing in various places. Um, I, I'm i a peer. Um, wet showers, if you will. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm a peer. So I don't think a child should get whipped for peeing in the back seat of the car. Sometimes your bladder can't hold things. Now, when you say you're a peer, <laughs> care to elaborate on that? I, I, no, I actually, I don't. I mean, no. your company is called Raindrops. Oops. <laughs> you are so good at this. Man, I told Ooh, you. Claudia. Oh, you're good. Now we know the real meaning of Raindrops. It's a double <laughs> Come through golden showers. Al, what do you think about this? Unfortunately, uh, this pissed me. I'm going to just say this pissed me the fuck <laughs> off. This pissed me the fuck off. This is this is unnecessary. He's 10 freaking years old, cops. And this is what's so bad. The first cop that showed up on the on the scene 
talked to the mother. The mother said in front of the cop, why did you do it? He said, because my sister said that there was no bathroom in the building. So he pissed in the back of the freaking car. I mean, you know, outside. Yeah. It was the other cops that arrived decided to escalate it because the first cop was going, well, just like, okay, son, you know, you're not supposed to do that. You guys can go on your way. It was the other two of the cops who arrived that wanted to escalate this to a public indecency charge. How dare they? How dare they treat and traumatize our young black little boys like this? It's not right. But, and have some freaking compassion. What if it was like a little white boy or you saw your nephew or you saw your kid in that kid? You wouldn't have put him in the back of a car, put handcuffs on him, and send him down to the police station. This is disgusting. They need to call Ben Crump. That's right, Al. It is the hypocrisy. Now, speaking of that, uh, Mr. D-Boy Sexy says, wait, didn't Al say he liked golden showers? <laughs> <laughs> do you, Al? I do. Oh, standing up or sitting down? Listen, standing, what? Standing up or sitting down. Receiving or giving. Yes. Are you receive like are you do you receive the urine as you're standing up, sitting down, laying on your back, spread okay. eagle? What's the position, Al? Oh, no. I, I like giving golden showers. I like I like receiving them too. I like I like I've said it before on the show. I like the warmth of the of the urine. You know, you can tongue. use hot water for that. <laughs> I mean <laughs> hey, don't, don't judge me for my kink, okay? Don't judge me. Carissa Keep blocks. Too. Uh, uh, Chi Chi says, I love Carlos on here. Bring him back. And uh, yeah, they love you, Thank Carlos. You. Keep it locked because coming up next, find out who the new minority will be. And later, we're playing a game of Thank You Next. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. Carlos, we have uh, some of your castmates from Love and Marriage, Jamie and Arena, uh, Tyler. They want to know when they're coming back, man. They said the fans are asking them, so I don't know what you can say, but those are my people. So I said, I'll, I'll see if I can slide in. So do you have anything you want to say to them? Yes, have them contact Oprah Winfrey Network, and they will let you. <laughs> no, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. We just wrapped the reunion. It's an amazing second half of the season. If I have the answer, you will know. Uh, but you will know very soon. All right, uh, Carlos, Love and Marriage Detroit is the latest series to join the own Love and Marriage franchise family. Let's take a look. It's time for the man to take lead. Why not have a mentor? Marceau. You have to be the movement. I'm not even joking. You are holding me back. I'm not happy. I just want everybody to have my back. Do not call my husband. I'll broke every bone in your body. So let's, let's, let's do what I do. Nobody knows what you do. They're fake as hell. Ooh, Carlos, congratulations. And what can you tell us about the show? And when we're doing our Dallas show. Oh, I'm sorry. That I know. I know. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> Love and Marriage Detroit airs every Saturday, 8 o'clock, 7 Central on the Oprah Winfrey Network. It's the third installment of the Love and Marriage franchise right behind Huntsville and D.C. It's amazing to see these couples navigate their relationships with each other and their marriages. It's fun. It's explosive. It's dramatic. It's, it's what you would expect from this franchise. And I suggest that everybody tunes in. If, if you haven't, it's an amazing series from my hometown, Detroit, Michigan. Well, we expect nothing less from you. You are a reality show, the God. I'll give you that. All right, let's get back to some topics. Get into this team. According to The Guardian, Gen Z will be the last generation with the white majority. Do you think this is a reason why white people are losing their mind, Al? <laughs> absolutely absolutely they they see that our nation's love for the white heritage is going to have to shift and that shift is going to happen regardless whether they want it or not now the deal is how are we going to handle this power struggle during this shift because it appears that you know presidents like trump have set up things like our justice system our supreme justice where there's still going to be a lack of diversity so i'm hoping and i still want african americans to know that look we need to pretend like nothing's changed we still got to fight for our space fight for our rights and continue to be in their face all right carlos what do you think about white folks being the not being the majority is shortly well, look, I think that's the reason why you saw the insurrection. That's the reason why you saw a lot of the Trump supporters um, react the way they did when he wasn't president. That is a real fear that white people, not all, some have. I've seen it on numerous shows. They do feel that they are about to become the minority. 
And they're upset because they see how we get treated as the minority. And guess what? It ain't fun. That part. And, you know, if you look at uh, the teachings of Jane Elliott, she had a, a study, a, a class, where she's like, white people, if any of you would trade places and be take the treatment that black people get, stand up. Not one person stood up. So they all know what's happening. So that's just guilty conscience. That's a big reason for the abortion ban. They try to make their women have to keep those babies. All right, we'll have more on that, I'm sure. Coming up, we are playing a fun game of Thank You Next with Carlos King. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat. Keeping it pop in. We appreciate all the love and make sure you hit that like button. All right, Carlos, what else do you have coming up in the works? And also, do you have a dream interview that you hope will come to fruition on Reality with the King? That's a good question. So Love and Marriage Detroit's airing now. Bell Collective comes back in November. Love and Marriage Hunts will return soon. And we got some things in the works, so stay tuned. And my dream guest for Reality with the King is Britney Spears. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I want the exclusive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we're here for it. Now, Carlos, we can all attest that you are the king of reality TV. So with that being said, we'd like for you to tell us which reality stars should stay in the game or move on to the next. Oh, are, you, are you ready to play? Thank you. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, we've already been messy, Carlos. So let's let, why stop now? Let's cue the music. Let's go. All right, Carlos. First up, we have Safari. Should he stay in the game or thank you next? Stay in the game. Okay, Carlos. All right, Carlos. How about Drew Sedora? Stay in the game or thank you next? Stay in the game only if we're going to understand what happened between her and Ralph and if she's dating a woman, allegedly. Oh. You said allegedly dating a woman? Now you know. Well, our mutual friend, Claudia, shut up. I know. Next, please. <laughs> Carlos. Oh, I know you love this one. Martel Holt, stay in the game or thank you next? This is your boo. Uh, first, you should write. Oh, great. Now the melody is going to read me. No, stay in the game. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. Maurice Scott, stay in the game or thank you next? Stay in the game. All right, Carlos, what about Sonya Richard Ross? Stay in the game or thank you next? Okay, Sonya just announced she's pregnant and I think she should take a break. And I'm not being funny. Take a break, have the baby, be a mom, focus on that and then decide whether or not you should return to reality television. I think that sounds like a... That sounds like next. a next. He trying to say next. <laughs> All right, Carlos, I got a good one for you. What about our girl, Cynthia Bailey? Stay in the game or thank you next? Thank you next. I, I, I love Cynthia being an actress. I think Cynthia's time on reality TV is, has, has been great. Um, I think she should stay being an actress. She's doing a great job doing that. Cynthia is actually a pretty good actress. I love That's not Cynthia. Fair. That's She's not Dave at all. She's growing. She should, she should continue her growth and, and not go backwards. All right, Carlos. Candy Burris, stay in the game or thank you next? I think Candy should do spinoff. Or spinoff. Yeah. So I think she should say thank you to Housewives and and venture off and do her spinoff. Hmm. All right, Carlos, Kim Kardashian, stay in the game or thank you next? Thank you next. I think Kim had a great run. The Kardashian is not the show that it used to be. I think it's time for Kim Kardashian to wrap it up. No pun intended. Okay. Carlos, Giselle Bryant, stay in the game or thank you next? Ooh, I love Giselle. I want Giselle to come back next season being more real. And if that's the case, stay in the game. But if Giselle's going to do the same thing we've been seeing, then I think it's time to say thank you next. Oh, that's hot. Okay, since we're talking about Giselle, what about Robin Dixon? Stay in the game or thank you next? If I'm not getting the real story between Robin and Juan Dixon on a on a continuous basis, not just one scene, 
I need that. If not, thank you next. You know, what our producers are so shady, Justin, Carlos, and la- I'm reading the prompt, last but not least, what about me? Stay in the game or should I move on to the next? I have moved on. Well, I, I, I was going to say, you have moved on to the next, and me and Claudia are talking about next thing. No, so I think Claudia... What'd you well, say? Claudia, you, well, you, you're, you're in the game. You have so many things going on, but... I don't know. I think you should... I should EP the show in Dallas that we talked about that you love. Exactly, exactly. So that's staying in the game, but doing some next level stuff. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. We've covered a lot of crazy stories, so we like to... Uh... Oh, do we have time? I don't think we have time. Ah, we don't have time for that. So look, um, Carlos, we're going to be looking forward to all the things you got going on. You stay busy, and, and we I can't wait to see who your next sit-down interview is going to be with. Oh, the next one I have is is a good one. It's a Give good us exclusive. One. Give it to us. Give it to us. No, no, no. I want, I want people to focus on Kenya. It, you know, this week we dropped Kenya Moore, our 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 friend Claudia Jordan. Um, but the next one is a woman from another show, another network. Okay, you're not gonna tell us, so I gotta cut you off because we gotta go. Okay. We ran out of time. I want to thank my co-host, Al Reynolds and Carlos King, for filling in for Funky. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Tracks and Tales. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Carlos. Great job. Thank you.